So, good morning. It's over. Yay. Though I will say, this last episode was probably better than the other two. Um, and again, I am going to let everybody know, I do have history degrees in English history, but I really didn't study the two doors. I, I've been reading about them since my accident, you know, I continued following the line. I had was doing my PhD um, for the Cousins War for that period of time from, um, again, I have a tra traumatic brain injury, plus I had meningitis, so I have holes in my brain, so I will occasionally not remember stuff correctly. Um, I believe it was Richard II. Then Henry the Fourth, then Henry the Fifth, then Henry the Sixth, then Edward, then Henry the Sixth again, then Edward, then Richard the Third, then Bosworth, which was the end, then Henry the Seventh, and Elizabeth of York, and then Henry the Eighth. <sighs> so that's my cabin. Please forgive any mistakes. Please let me know below if I do mess up. I have no problem with that. And I, I do have questions. I, I still have a question about the ferrets. What the hell's up with the ferrets? Good lord. Anyway. There are, I mean, I, uh, there's issues. I mean... It seemed, the very beginning seemed very, very rushed. It just seemed very rushed. And I'm trying not to go off on rants. I'm trying not to go off on any tangents this time at all. Um, but it was rushed in the, they put her in, not the tower. I don't quite know where she was, but it wasn't the queen's apartments, which was very spacious, very lavish. There was wood paneled walls. There was tapestries. And she had several rooms. The queen's apartments also had gardens that I don't think she did. I don't think she was allowed to go walk in them, but it's the queen's apartments. It's where she had spent the night before her coronation, if I remember correctly. So it's not a dungeon with bare stone walls. It just, ugh. That kind of was disconcerting. Um, let me see. Paper. I actually only got one page. I'm just, like, shocked about that. Um. I, I think she had a gallery. I think it was a gallery attached. The, the building she was held in no longer exists. So, we can't even go in there to figure out where she was in there. Uh, there's new Queen's Quarters elsewhere, which I don't think have been used for a very long time, Elizabeth. Um, they also weren't treating her as a queen during that whole thing. She was still a queen up until the moment that she was found guilty and all the rights and everything were taken away. And even then they still treated her like a queen. Uh, wow, okay. I got soda on this. Uh, she was... She wasn't alone. She didn't just have Anne Sheldon, Shelton, Shelton, um, and that one other girl. She had four ladies. There was, uh, Miss Stoner, which was the wife of, uh, the Sergeant of Arms. Uh, I believe Elizabeth Wood. She was an aunt by marriage. Um, Margaret Coffin. Uh, she was the wife of uh, her master of horse. Uh, Mary Scrope. And Anne Shelton. She, she was there. Um, we know, we've seen this in a couple of different, oh yeah, a couple of different movies. The other Boleyn girl where Catherine Carey was there. Um, no, she wasn't <laughs> ever there. Sorry, Philippa. Yes, I enjoy your books, but more often than not, they're very, not very historically, they're very, yeah, not accurate. 
Uh, but I do enjoy fictions, what ifs. So that's why I can enjoy movies that aren't quite historically accurate, so long as they're done well. Like, I love Kingdom of Heaven. I do. But I like the director's cut. It's not historically accurate at all. <laughs> Go watch the history buffs. Um, they have a whole video on it. But I enjoy it. I think it's good. I mean, it, it, again, I can separate that. It enjoy a show if it's not historically accurate. Will it nag on me? Yes. Like the constant lack of veils. The lack of lavish dresses. Lavish dress. It just See, I'm going to keep going back to the costuming thing. Because the costuming thing is the easiest thing you can do. I mean, you can literally, if you get them up in proper gear, it works. If they're in gear that looks like came out of a high school or college costume room, is then where I'm like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um... She did eat dinner every night with Kingston. Uh, that is real. Uh, she did not trash her room after finding out what the charges were. She, she yeah, no. It, and nobody manhandled her afterwards. Uh, from my understanding, um, from... Oh, my brain's farting at the moment. This is not good when my brain does this. It really? Oh, crap. Video just started that it shouldn't have. Oh, good lord. Anyway. Um, there's the Boleyn, Anne Boleyn Files. Um, I forgot the woman's name that runs the page. Damn it. Uh, but she's very in-depth in Anne Boleyn. Um, and I do listen to her and I watch her. I just, right now, my brain's not making the connection. It probably will later on, but... Um, it just, like I said, it, it, there's known facts about her trial, uh, the lead-up to the trial, how she was treated in the tower, uh, how the trial went, the length of time to the exit. And that's the thing, is... Oh, they had it was five months. Five months. The last five months of her life. Three episodes. Could have been so much better. It, it, it could have. In they dropped so much to fill in with crap, and that's what upsets me. Is you don't need to alter history. History is utterly fascinating as is. Absolutely. You you don't need to add stupid crap like a woman throwing a temper tantrum and destroying everything on the table. It just it's just wouldn't be done. Um Madge she never came. She was never there. She was not there at all. Um when they were going to the trial, I saw George in the crowd. What the hell was George doing in the crowd? George should have been waiting to be brought in to be tried. I believe he was tried after Anne. And you know stuff said during that trial that would have been great in the show but they didn't, you know, and I get it that it was, it's all about Anne. I do, I get it, I get it, I get it. It's all from her viewpoint. Um, but even that they got wrong. Like, like her speech at the trial is off. Um, I mean, it's just, just so. I mean, just stuff that. I mean, I just. Mm, I'm trying to find. There you go. Um, Anne Boleyn at her trial gave a speech. I do not say that I have always borne towards the king the humility which I owed him, considering his kindness and the great honor he showed me and the great respect he has always paid me. I admit, too, that often I have taken it into my head to be jealous of him, but may God be my witness, I have done him any other wrong. Not the speech she gave. 
I mean, she she every time they laid out. I mean, and I mean, they kind of stuck to the reading of her charges and stuff. It it it, it, it it's it's a tragedy because of the simple fact that these men wanted her gone, and it was it was it. And I mean, in Henry, I mean, he, I mean, he wanted her dead because he, I don't think he wanted to think of her still living and not being with him or whatever. I mean, we, we know he's a little bit mm. um oh god <laughs> the, 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 other, <laughs> the other thing that threw me was during the trial Bangs Girl showed up <laughs> Elizabeth Summer Somerset? Summer? Summer? Oh, I don't know but it's just every time I saw her I'm like, no no bangs why do you have bangs? You should have at least pulled them back underneath your freaking fringe hood. Ah! I can't see we're going back to that. Me and the costumes, man. I have an issue. The simplest things. I mean, the fact that they can't get the simplest things right. Just, mm. And the fact that some people will take this as serious history. And it's just like, no. I've got a cat freaking out, so... <laughs> Um, the whole thing with Kramer, Kramner, Kramer, Kramer, anyway, with him coming in, um, after the trial, and I do have a question about that, um, I have, when she was leaving, they have pronounced sentence that she's guilty, and to either be burned or beheaded, either or, um, They turned the halberd so the blade's pointing back towards her. And, and, and they, they made a big deal out of it. And I'm sitting there doing that. The, it's because the person's condemned, correct? It's a change of status. Please, anybody out there who does know the answer to this, let me know in the comments below. I'm not sure. Uh, because, again, um, it's... You know, hole in my brain. I, I can't remember. And I tried looking it up during the episode. The episode, I, it took me about an hour and a half to watch it. Um, but I think it was Cromwell, not Kramer, who broached the annulment paperwork and for her to sign it. Um, the stories of the nunnery, it, 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 it's gossip, it's rumor, uh, to the best of my knowledge, I, I don't think she ever had the option of going to a nunnery. Uh, she, she, was, she was a dead woman walking. I literally wrote that. No one's sure where this nunnery story came from, so... Um, she didn't see George ever again. Um, she didn't see any of those men ever again. Uh, she did not get that chance. And I will admit, Jody did a fantastic job. She did a fantastic job getting us invested in Anne's story. She's a great actress. Um, <laughs> drink delivery! Woohoo! <laughs> no, it's not vodka or tequila this time. Um, but she did a great job. I actually teared up. Because Anne didn't get that chance. See? Doing it again! But that's because I'm relating it to Anne. So, that didn't happen, but it's a beautifully shot scene. See, I'm I'm welling up. She did fantastic on that. And I wrote it down. Heartbreaking scene. It is. Because she knows he's dead in a few hours. And Madge, I mean, I don't know how the men were executed. I don't remember. I didn't look it up. I didn't read about it. Um... I don't know if they were executed in public or just in front of nobles. Um, I know they were all beheaded. Uh, Mark Smeaton could have potentially been drawn and quartered, which is a horrible death. Uh, he wasn't. He was beheaded. So they were all beheaded. Uh, I don't know how many strokes it took to get George's head off. I don't think it was three. I think they all got one lop and they were done. 
So that doesn't upset me. Um, and again, because this is from Anne's, we're seeing it from Anne's point of view. I can see why a lot of things weren't included. Um, but I don't, there's a few things I don't like about the very end is the fact that they didn't discuss the fact that it was a French executioner, that she was going to be beheaded by a sword, which is quick. And no, no chance of, you know, whoops, I'm going to miss and hit you in the back of the skull. Hey! Queen of Scotland, Mary? Yeah. Gore hack around the shoulders, or, you know, which was Thomas Cromwell later. Uh, <laughs> spoiler. Um... But I, I, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, but I, I, I do believe they all went with one whack, and Madge would not. She, she wasn't there. I'm just, I'm, I'm like mm, with that scene. Now the execution scene, leading up to it, and, and again, and I'm upset that they didn't really go into depth about a lot of this. Um, the yeoman of the guard, yeoman of the guard, I think it's the, or the king's guard would have created a path for her to be able to walk and it wasn't open to the public it was open to the nobility and Chapuis was there and the other ambassadors were there a lot was written about it we have contested stories of what speech she gave which they didn't do the last words of Anne Boleyn they skipped it Dan Jones why? That is... That... Why? Of all things, that would have been beautiful of Jody to do. To do that last speech. Instead, they get all this quiet... <laughs> between Madge and Ann Sheldon. I was like, no! She had her four ladies with her. Her four ladies came up with her. Which would have been Anne would have been there, but not Madge. There should have been three other ladies there. And then, my next issue, her hair. I think I mentioned this in the first episode. Her hair. You're about to get decapitated. You know this. This is a common thing that happened in that era. You know things go wrong. You don't want an impediment to that sword. You don't want to get the sword to get stuck halfway through and you still be alive. Poor Margaret Pohl. Poor Thomas Cromwell. Poor um, Mary, Queen of Scots. Her, her hair is so low, it's not going to offer a clean swipe. They should have coiffed it up higher, like, in her turban. Like, she had her hair in a turban. Her hair should have been in a turban. It should have been up and out of the way. That is my major issue with the execution. Now, people on Twitter are going ape shit about the execution, how brutal it was, how gory it was. And I'm like, well, how was it gory? You see the guy sing, swing the sword, and then it cuts right before contact. You don't see a head fall. You don't see the spurt of blood coming from the, the neck. You don't see anything. You just hear the thud of her head and Madge just losing it. It's like... <sighs> and again, no speech. Um, and, and I'm, I'm trying to find what she said as she was waiting for the sword to remove her head. Um, the exact words, I had them and I lost them. Uh, she repeated several times, okay, after being blindfolded and kneeling at the block, not that there was a block, there was no block. Um, she repeated several times, to Jesus Christ I commend my soul, Lord Jesus receive my soul. I'm not sure if she said exactly that, but, mm. but her speech, 
that we all sort of take for granted is what she said. I mean, we have conflicting stories from different ambassadors and different people that were there. But the common one that everybody basically says this is what she said is, Good Christian people, I am come hither to die, for according to the law and by the law, I am judged to die, and therefore I will speak nothing against it. I am come hither to accuse no man, nor speak anything of that, whereof I am accused and condemned to die, but I pray God, save the king, send him long to reign over you. For a gentler nor a more merciful prince was there, never. And to me he was ever a good, a gentle, and sovereign lord. If any person will meddle in, of my cause, I require them to judge, to judge the best. And thus I take my leave of the world, and of you all. And I hardly, oh, I hardly desire you all to pray for me. O oh Lord, have mercy on me to God I commend my soul. Ooh. And I didn't do that. Just think how well Jody would have pulled that off. That is a shame that they didn't. And then, after all of that, they, they you know, they cut to Crom Cromwell sitting there with a smug fucking look. Pardon my swearing. I mean, it's just like, really? That's how you were gonna end it? Put a fork in me. I'm done. Uh, um, um, she did great, Jody. I mean, she did awesome. And um, the girl who played um, Princess Mary Ayla, Ayla, I can't pronounce her name. Irish. <laughs> um, she did great. Um. Who was the, the other... Uh, and I still... I mean, I'm still kind of, like, gobsmacked by the height difference between Jody and Henry. Uh, or, I think it was... I think the actor's name was Henry. Henry or Mark. I'm not sure. But it was still just... It, it's... Glad it's over. Um, I'm upset at the historical inaccuracies. I mean, really, I am. I mean, it is day and error we, we we know we know it's feasible people will enjoy well written real history uh there's no need to to you know add bullcrap um the direction was meh you know it, it was the script was just flat. Uh, it was the emotive aspects that I love. I mean, Jodi was great at emoting uh, what she was trying to get through in this horrible dialogue. Um, this was not a psychological thriller at all. What was a thi there's just no psychological thriller in it at all. I mean, how could there be? We all know where it leads. So it just... Again, Jody made a superb ad. She 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 did. I don't care what color she is. If she if she could do it, she did it. She did fine. Was it disconcerting? Yes. Did it pull me out of being immersed in the show? Yes. The hair. The skin, the, the, there were times where I was just like, wait a minute, Madge is tannish colored, but her mother is white. What color is her father? You know, and I w there was a lot of that going on, and I would just stop and go, wait a minute. Huh? Just, it, it, and I do, I have a thing when it comes to, now I'm going to go off on a tangent. I have a thing when it comes to history. People should be represented as the people that they are from the area that is being made a movie of. So Egyptians should play Egyptians, Middle Eastern people should be playing Middle Eastern people, Chinese people should be playing Chinese, Japanese should be playing Japanese, Native Americans should be played by Native Americans. 
English people that we know are white should be white. I mean, it'd be like seeing the King of Sweden being played by Martin Freeman. You know, it, it just... Or, or um, yeah, like I said before, uh, Brad Pitt playing Nelson Mandela. You know, it just... It... it again, it was like um, a certain cavalier giggling person who has his own channel made a comment on his community post about um, John Wayne and Genghis Khan, and I'm just like, oh my god, that was that was so bad. It, it's just which there is a good Genghis Khan movie out there that I highly recommend called um, Mongol. Fantastic movie, uh, and. The guy who plays Genghis Khan, I don't think he is Mongol, but I think he's Chinese. I'm, I'm, I'm can't be a hundred percent sure because <laughs> I'm not gonna take the time to pull it up. But it is an excellent movie. I highly recommend it. Now again, back to this Anne Boleyn. If you want to see the story of Anne Boleyn, the last year of her life, in Dunwell, not from her viewpoint, go watch Wolf Hall. I mean, at this point, I'm looking, the Tudors did it better. At this point. It, it was just... Uh, it just, yeah. This this had nothing new to it, other than the casting. It reminds me of uh, the Ghostbusters remake. With the gimmicky casting of all women. And how everybody got all up in arms. The woke society jumped up and said, Y'all pissed because it's going to be women. You know, you're not even giving it a chance. We gave it a chance. I gave it a chance. It was horrific. It was a bad movie. Sometimes, doing a gimmick doesn't make the movie better. Or make the TV show better. So stop doing it. Try to make period accurate movies the stories the intrigues everything's there already stop trying to change history you don't need to history is entertaining enough as it already is jesus See, like, mm, i'm not even oh nope so yeah that's the end of that and i know we have a uh, movie, not movie, TV series coming up about Elizabeth, which I'm not looking forward to. Uh, but again, this this is all like stuff I'm kind of reading up on now and studying a little bit, but it's not going to be in depth and none of the stuff's really going to stick in my head that well. Um, oh, yeah, the last thing. The last thing. Elizabeth was sidelined, ignored, and eventually imprisoned by her own sister, Mary. Until a succession crisis meant she was crowned Queen of England. Wait, what? There was no succession crisis between Mary and Elizabeth. There was between Edward and Mary. That's when we ended up with Jane Grey. The, what is it, 11-day queen? I think it was 11-day queen. Crap. <laughs> but there wasn't a succession crisis. It was Mary died, Elizabeth is queen. Boom. That was it. So, that, that's my last mm, about this. <laughs> I got my son dancing in the corner like, yeah, no. And he's not as much of, he is not a history buff. Hey. That was kind of a promotion. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go figure out what movies we're going to watch on Sunday because I haven't even decided yet. I haven't even thought about movies. Uh, so, I hope you guys have a great day. If you made it all the way to here, leave a comment. Answer me about the damn ferrets and about the hal halberds. I, I need to know the answer to those. Uh, like and subscribe! There you go. <laughs> have a great night, everyone.